Gentlemen, the purpose of this assembly is to acquaint all new members of the 51st Fighter Interceptor Wing with the wing staff officers, the mission of the wing, and its daily operation. The reason we are doing this is because you may feel, due to the nature of your job, that it alone is not very important. But after you understand how a mission is fully prepared and carried out, we feel sure you will realize how vital your particular job is to ensure the completion of a successful operational mission. Teamwork has made the 51st famous the world over, and you may justly feel proud that you are now a member of that team. At this time, I would like you to meet our wing commander, Colonel Francis S. Cabresti. Gentlemen, I wish to welcome you to the 51st Fighter Interceptor Wing in Korea. While you are here, and in a very short period of time, I think, you will realize why the Fighting 51st has compiled one of the best combat records in the history of the United States Air Force. You will quickly acquire a team spirit, for teamwork is the keynote of our success. We are all very proud of the record made by the 51st in the Korean conflict. Since the beginning of hostilities, this organization has been in the forefront of the aerial war. Our mission of providing cover for the fighter bombers is a vital part of the United Nations effort in the air. And each and every one of you has an individual role to play in that mission. The continued success of our mission depends entirely upon you and your fellow members of the wing. Your duties will sometimes be hard and arduous. Often you will be required to work long hours, but always remember this is combat. And everything we do here has but one end in sight, keeping our planes in the air. Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure meeting you. I know that you will enjoy your tour with us, and I'm sure that you will take a lot of personal pride in the future accomplishments of the 51st. I wish you the best of luck in your new assignments. Men, do you realize all the tedious planning and work that takes place before a mission? Success or failure does not depend upon the pilot alone. He does not simply grab his parachute on the run, hop into the plane, and head into action. From the moment the call from Joint Operations Center, commonly known as Jock, is received over the direct line from 5th Headquarters, the mission is underway. Jock issues the warning order, giving only certain portions of the first mission the following day, which, which permits only preliminary planning steps to be taken by the Group Operations Section. The information contained in the warning order alerts the number of aircraft and pilots required. And this information, in turn, is relayed to the squadron operations officers for their actions. Time for a proposed briefing for the pilots is set. The engineering officer, who is responsible for the combat readiness of the Sabre jets and his squadron, is informed as to the number of aircraft required for the first mission of the following day. Now he, in turn, contacts his line and flight chiefs, who together decide which sabers will take to the sky. The flight chief must check and recheck the planes. Is it refueled to capacity? Since every drop of jet fuel is precious to carry the ship on its patrol through MIG Alley. Is the radio operating satisfactorily? The Sabre must have ears and a voice to listen and speak with its fellow fighters and ground liaison. As armament personnel taking care of the ammunition for the guns, no item is unimportant. Nothing can be overlooked. As the electronic section completed their complicated checks,
Extra wing fuel tanks must be ready for installation on the aircraft after it returns from the morning mission. Each time a Sabre sights bandits, the wing tanks are dropped immediately. To the unaccustomed eye, the Sabre jet seems to be swarming with airmen, but each has a specific job to do, and each does it in the efficient, skillful manner that he has been trained, just as you new airmen will be doing. Not until everyone is positive the Sabre is in top shape can it be bedded down for the night. Teamwork is the byword here, as you will soon find out. While the Sabre is being groomed, the message center in group operations has received a teletype from Jock with more information regarding the following day's mission. The duty officer compares the message with the first notice received by phone to see if any changes have been made. One copy of the message is placed in the safe, while the other is turned over to the duty non-commissioned officer for his information so that he may compile the combat mission briefing report. Weather is an uncontrollable factor and must be diagnosed as accurately as humanly possible to supply the mission with all the information that can be had in reference to nature's wind. Weather in Korea is changeable with alarming speed, so it can hardly be taken for granted. Wind speeds and direction at various altitudes must be computed. Types of clouds and their locations must be analyzed. Temperatures are read and tabulated. All available information from other sources and weather stations is gathered. Teletype brings in reports of weather other pilots have encountered. Facsimile charts from other weather stations are received by wire. All this information is passed on to the base weather forecaster, who draws up weather maps from this information. The wing weather officer, with the aid of the maps, compiles a weather forecast that will be passed on to the pilots at the pre-flight briefing in the morning. intelligence data for today's mission. This is mission 5102. Your call sign is Maple. Time over the target is 1240. You will provide cover for 16 F-84 fighter bombers, call sign Gel, attacking rail lines west of Changju at 1240. Other F-86 Sabres, call sign John, will cover 36 F-80 fighter bombers, call sign Midas, attacking the same target at 1315. Escape and evasion procedures remain the same. We have a large and a small helicopter at each of these two islands, and an albatross flying boat will be orbiting over this island. If you should run into any trouble in the target area, pull out over the water, and they will be there to pick you up. Stand by for a timeline. In 15 seconds, it will be 11.10. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, pack. Eleven ten. Weather situation this morning shows a weak northerly flow over all of Korea with a cold front which is down past the southern tip of Korea at the present time, uh, giving us clearing weather in the northern portion 
which uh, means that it will be fully operational for this mission. This is the expected weather for the mission here. Overcast clouds in the local area, ceilings 10 to 12,000 feet. And breaking off here, a little further north, going to eight tenths coverage. And finally, up in the area, we have about three tenths coverage, out of cumulus, around 14, 15,000 feet. Above all this, we have a cirrus overcast, very thin, around 35,000 feet. Shouldn't cause any trouble at all. Visibility in the area is very good, 10 miles. Condensation trail is very heavy this morning, from 34,000 to 37,000 feet. Average winds would be out of the west, 60 knots. The weather at the base here for both takeoff and landing will be 10,000 foot ceiling, six miles visibility, and a light northerly wind at the surface. Altimeter 29.89 inches. Similar weather at your alternate K-14 if you have to make an emergency landing there. The tide is coming in, reaching high tide at 1610. Water temperature approximately 54 degrees. Start engines indicated on the board. Taxi out close trail. Check in on easy channel. Fly the mission on easy channel. Come back, we'll land on Baker. Have a slight change in runway situation. Taxi all the way down the extreme south end. Make your emergency fuel check here. Take off in trail on the east side of the runway. After you're airborne, make your complete cockpit check between K-14 and Heiju Peninsula. Check your emergency fuel switch off. Gun sight working, pressurization working, tip tanks feeding. Flight leaders, IFF will be on normal, everyone else on standby. After you cross the bone line, get your gun switches on, gunfire circuit breaker in, and test fire your guns. Keep your radio chatter down, unless you have something important to say. If you get in trouble when you're up there, call your flight leader, or contact someone in the flight, tell him what's wrong. He'll decide if you should go to emergency. Bingo, will be 1,800 pounds, flight leader discretion. All the radio aids are working, the homers are in. Are there any questions? Yes, is taxiway three still closed? Yes, that's right. Taxiway three is still closed. Hello, fighter sweep of day. In this area right here, we'll start engines as I indicated on, on the board. Here's the plan. Tiger flight, you'll take off up to this area here. Right out up to here, where you make a right turn, come about 30 miles inland, and hook back in. Eagle flight, you'll follow Tiger. You'll come up this area here, up to this point here, where you make a left turn, hook back in. A wolf flight, you do the same thing that Tiger did, and hawk flight, you do the same thing that Eagle did. And with our time separation, that should uh, give us pretty well area coverage. The last two flights, Wolf and Robin, will take off and come up the center, this point here, where they'll cut right up in to the uh, Yellow River, cutting short of the Yellow, where they'll split, one doing a right turn, and Wolf will make a, a left turn. Uh, the first four flights into the area will stay below the contrails and keep a, a close watch on the fighter bombers. The last two flights will go above the contrails and check very closely for any MiG aircraft that might come in above the cons. Now, if you see MiGs up there today, call them out. Give their altitude, direction, and geographical location on the, on the map. And call it out and then get off the radio. Now, remember, once you look around, keep your speed up. And if you do get a bounce, Cut him off and drive in in range. When you get in range, shoot, and when you shoot, shoot the kill. Anybody got any questions? Okay, let's go get
Again and again, combined teamwork of highly skilled men with a vital job to do put the Sabre Jet into the wild blue. Not until they are all safely in the air can the ground crews relax. Close by the revetments, the American Red Cross offers free coffee and donuts to all. It has been the policy of the 51st Fighter Interceptor Wing to look after the personal welfare of their men. In combat zones, it becomes a paramount problem to try to provide all the comforts and home-like conditions for the wing personnel. Every effort has been made to provide recreational facilities and to encourage, encourage all to use their own initiative to utilize all available material to create their own recreational programs. If you like to relax and read, the service club library is a pleasant place to spend a few hours. They also have the game room where you may play ping pong. Or you can enjoy a game of pool. Movies are shown every night. Horseshoes are enjoyed by many. Baseball diamonds have been built and interest squadron competition is encouraged. Food at the mess hall has been made as appetizing and delicious as possible. The dining room has many refinements you may not expect in a combat zone. In fact, it may remind you of the little restaurant around the corner back home. Many of you that have arrived in Korea just lately from the States will find the country with its scenic beauty a strange and fascinating place. The natives, unmindful of the war, carry on about their daily course. Their means of transportation are very crude, but picturesque. The way they farm is a far cry from the way we are accustomed to seeing it. They use very crude and simple tools. Their quaint dress style of which has not changed from generation to generation. You will see walled cities that were built hundreds of years ago for protection from their enemies. You will see beautiful temples of worship. In fact, many of you will find never-ending pleasure in the sights about you. Those of you that have cameras will be able to go in your spare time, take many photographs that you may never ever find elsewhere. The 51st recognizes the need for religious facility and the desire of all to seek religious guidance and comfort. Wing Chapman visits the orphanage nearby, where those less fortunate than us are given a helping hand. The 51st Fighter Interceptor Wing has adopted the whole orphanage and extend ever kindness to them. The 51st has always wanted to convey the feeling that as representatives of the United Nations, we are also representatives of the people at home.
one coming around at two level. All right, Roger, boy, I got him. It takes more than a pilot and an airplane to carry out a combat mission. You should feel, regardless of the nature of your job, that you will be directly or indirectly responsible for the success of a mission. All must work as a team. All must take personal pride in their job. If you work in the armament section, arming the guns on the aircraft, Driving the fuel truck that provides the lifeblood for the engine. And working on the heavy equipment that builds the runways and revetments and roads so that all may move safely. Driving for transportation that provides the wheels for the 51st wing 24 hours a day. The air police that guard the base and direct traffic so all can go about their jobs safely and without danger and fear. The doctors who look after the health and well-being of all the wing personnel. The dental officers that see that our teeth are taken care of properly to ensure our good health. The mess cook preparing the meals so that all are well fed with good nourishing food. Prepared in the most pleasing manner to add to the enjoyment of eating. The weather station where the responsibility is great and the work is hard and never ending. The photo lab where the gun camera film must be processed skillfully and quickly so that it may be viewed as soon as possible. The emergency crash personnel that must be ready at a moment's notice and even at the risk of their lives to try to save the pilot and aircraft in case of an accident. In fact, no job or operation is too small or unimportant that it can be left out. The pilots return safely because you did your part. They will always be grateful to you.
attention area. Today, over North Korea, the F-86 Sabre jets of the 51st Fighter Interceptor Wing destroyed seven Communist MiG-15s, probably destroyed one, and damaged three more. Pilots with claims in today's air battles are Major William Westcott, two destroyed, Colonel Francis Gabreski, one destroyed, First Lieutenant James McCulley, First Lieutenant Robert Sand, and First Lieutenant Donald Hemmer, with one destroyed apiece. Other claims for the day include one probably destroyed by First Lieutenant Harry Shoemate, two damaged by Major Donald E. Adams, and one damaged apiece by Major Harold Wilson and First Lieutenant Wesley Tillis. In today's operation, the 51st flew four missions and 111 effective stories.